you would, open your Bibles, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7. Verse 7. Uh, notice this, the word of the Lord. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. And I'm speaking today simply from the subject, stick to the script. Stick to the script. Stick to the script. Uh, as you may be aware, these are the instructions that God gave to Joshua uh, as Joshua was taking the mantle of leadership after Moses, God's servant, had died. We have to always be prepared because life is full of transition. Transition is a natural part of life, and we're living in a day in, in time right now where we are amid incredible transition. We are dealing with a political change and technological change and economic change and environmental change and political change, all these kinds of things, you know, sociological change. We are just filled with all kinds of change and transition, people getting divorced, people getting married, and somebody's child dying, somebody's spouse dying. Life is filled with transition. And what do you do when life thrusts you into another season of life and it didn't give you a manual as to tell you what to do now? Well, the Scriptures is very, very clear. The same word that God gave to Joshua, God speaks to us and He tells us, stick to the script. He has given us a script, and, and, I, and I do want you to realize that very, very carefully. We have to be very careful in times like this when there's a temptation to modify the script. But God says, don't turn from this thing to the right hand nor to the left. He's saying, stick to the script. Stick to the script, uh, stick to the script, because it means you have to depend on God. You do have to depend on God. Uh, the word script comes from a Latin word, uh, scribere, which means to write, to write. And all of its meanings have something to do with something that is written. Anytime that you have a script, it means something is written. Isn't it amazing that God is such a, a God who is uh, wants things written, that he had a whole tribe called the scribes, and their job was to write. And, and, and they, they so reverence God. My God, we have, you know, the world has lost the fear of the Lord because the church has lost the fear of the Lord. And uh, they had such reverence, the scribes had such reverence for the name of God that every time before they came to write the name of God, they would stop and take a bath. His name is holy. Somebody shout holy. holy. God's name is holy and it is to be revered, to be reverenced. They, they worshiped God in a reverential way that they, they honored him. They wouldn't just take God's name lightly. They wouldn't even, they took a bath just to write his name. And you know, they wouldn't even write all of the, the letters. It was too reverent. It's too reverent. And so they, they reverenced the name of the Lord. I dare you to start reverencing God's name in your life. You will be surprised what God will do because that's power in the name. That is power in the name. You know, your handwriting is your script. We, we call handwriting script. We call that script. But a script is a written version of what you're supposed to say or do, whether for a speech, a broadcast, a movie, or a play. You have a script. And sometimes people get in trouble when they get off script. I'm not calling any names, but uh, <laughs> there are people that, that start getting in trouble when they get off script. I, I remember I was, I was in a place one time, and uh, you know, because uh, I believe in a, a minister being prepared. I mean, don't get up before people and not prepare. Stick to the script. You know, he's given us the script. He, the Word was written. And I went to one place, and they had this, this, this thing that if, if, you, if you used a script, they, they felt the Holy Ghost wasn't in it. You know, and I wonder, well, where did you get that from? Jesus stood and read from the script. Where did you get that from? And then I had an old person say to me, they said, they said, ain't no file on that paper. <laughs> now, that's what they told me. Now, I was very respectful. I said, sir, with all due respect, there may not be any fire on the paper, but you can always use paper to start a fire. I mean, you know, I was, I was young, but I wasn't stupid. 
<laughs> and uh, I, I never had that conversation with that older gentleman again. Uh, so you don't, don't ever doubt what God did. You know, where you start doesn't mean that that's how he has to finish. So I, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. But the holy writ of Scripture is our script for how to live according to God's will for our lives. The holy writ of Scripture, it is our script for how to live according to God's will for our lives. Now, of course, since God is the author and the finisher, he's the author and the finisher, he alone holds a special writer's privilege. He holds a, a, a writer's privilege so that he can alter the scripts of our lives at any time, and your life can take a different turn. Sometimes things will be going a certain way, and that's, that's a certain thing as, as a writer's privilege. The author's privilege. I mean, you can have a person, whoever wrote the script has the authority to change the script at any time. You know, they can see somebody do something spontaneous and say, you know what, I like that. That's good. I'm going to use that. Or they'll do something and in the way that they had written it, it, when they saw it acted out, it didn't exactly give them the emotion or the impact that they wanted. And so they take the privilege of being able to change. Isn't that right, Lolita? You have, to just, you have to make some changes every now and then when you are a writer, when you are composing stuff. There's a liberty that the author has to be able to change the script. So God has this, this, this uh, freedom to be able to change the script in, in, in our lives. You know, so uh, whenever the Holy Spirit wants to change us, he, he, there are, are what we, I would call parenthetic instructions. You know, in every script, you know, there are some parenthetic instructions saying man enters from the side wearing gray suit laughing to himself. And it's just a parenthetic note, but it's a part of the script because something is supposed to happen during that time. And you have to write that in the, in, in the parentheses of the script so that not everything is designed for the actors to say or to do, but it, it's, it is an instruction to help the whole th piece come together. And is this interesting that when, when God says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, it, we could really reinterpret that to say God says, put some respect on my name. <laughs> put some respect on my name. Now, likewise, God expects us to put some respect on his word and the text of Scripture. Put some, put some respect on my word. Now, you notice what he said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. He said, listen, this is going to be eternal. Now, there, there are three reasons that we do things. For internal reasons, for external reason, and for eternal reasons. When you do something for eternal reasons, the word of God is eternal. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And so, in this respect, it, it especially has preeminence over every other form of manifestation. And let me just say this to you. The, uh, we get more out of the Bible when we let more of the Bible get in us. We get more out of the Bible when you let more of the Bible get in you. Uh, I love something that Amy Carmichael said. She said, never let good books take place of the Bible. Take the place of the Bible. Never let good books take the place of the Bible. And she said this, drink from the well, not merely from the streams that flow from the well. Drink from the well. Listen, don't ever replace the book with books. You go back to the book, you know, reverence the Bible. Uh, the Bible is, is, is good to change you. It's good to change you. That, there's a reason. This is not a history book. This is not literature. This is not ancient literature. The Bible is good to change you. The scriptures were not given for our information, D.L. Moody said, but for our transformation. This book is given for our transformation. If this book is not transforming our lives and transforming our character, something is wrong with how we are applying it or failing to apply it. If you work the Word, the Word will work. The Word transforms the lives of men. It transforms. The Word is good to change you. The Word is good to convict you. It's good to convict you. If you're wrong, you need convicting. Thank God that the Word is good to convict us. The word of the Lord, it is good to convict us. And uh, I, I, I'm glad Mark Twain, not exactly a diehard Christian, but he wrote these words. 
that most people are by, bothered by those passages of Scripture that they do not understand. He says, but the passages that bother me are the ones that I understand the most. <laughs> so, maybe you don't understand all of them, but the ones that you do understand, you know, they ought to bother you. The Word of God changes you. The Word of God convicts you. The Word of God corrects you. The, the, the Word of God will teach you how to get it right. It'll teach you how to get it right. It will correct you. The Word of God will coach you. It'll do those four things. It'll change you. It will convict you. It will correct you, and it will coach you. It'll correct you, teach you how to get it right. It'll coach you. It'll teach you how to keep it right. It'll teach you how to keep it right. And so whenever you get your Bible, because he said stick to the script, stick to the script, so our focus ought to be on our Bibles. It ought to be on the Bible. Stick to the script, stick to the script. I, I always tell people, listen, when you, when you approach the Word of God, put on your specs, put on your specs. Hey, everybody, can you do this for me? Just put, put on your specs. You know, when you put your specs on, specs, S-P-E-C-S, specs, uh, approach the Bible. When you're looking through your specs, and you want to see, is there a sin to confess? Because the Word will expose sin in your life. You, you, sin is in the Bible. And God knows it's in the world. A heap of it. A ton of it. You put your specs on, is there a sin to confess? Sin goes out of the life by one way, confession. 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 You put your specs on, is there a sin to confess? Because this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. This book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. You put your specs on, is there a sin to confess? Is there a promise to claim? Is there a promise to claim? Because you can't break God's promise by leaning on them. You lean on the promises of God. You won't break. They won't break. Is there a promise to claim? Is there a sin to confess? Is there a promise to claim? The E is, is there an example to follow? An example, an example, an example to follow. You know, the things that have happened to us in Scripture are written for our example, for our admonition. It's to be an example to us of things that happened to them when they sinned, they got in rebellion. He says, take that as an example. Take this as a lesson. Learn from their mistake. A fool does not learn from his mistake. A smart man learns from his own mistakes, but a wise man learns from the mistakes of the fool and the smart man. <laughs> so he's saying, I want you to, it, 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 there's an example to follow here. There's an example to follow. There's an example. There's a sin to confess. There is a, a promise to claim. There is an example to follow. The C is there a command to obey. You got your specs on. Is there a command to obey here? Is there a command? Is God commanding me to obey something? Is there a command to obey? God just, he, he, gave, him, he, he gave him a command. He says, uh, I want you to follow my word. Turn not to the right nor to the left. That's a command. You know, do you realize that the Ten Commandments are the Ten Commandments? They are not the Ten Suggestions. <laughs> they are commandments. They are commandments. Is there a, a, a command to obey? And then the S you put your specs on S-P-E-C-S. -E the S here is a stumbling block to avoid. Is there a stumbling block to avoid? Is there a stumbling block to avoid for me or for others who see me? Is there a stumbling block to avoid? And so I want you to notice the preeminence that God puts on his word. I want you to notice God puts preeminence on his word. Psalm 138 verse 2. Psalm 138 verse 2. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. Now notice this. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Do you see that God says that he has magnified his word above his name? His word is magnified above his name. You know why? Because it is his word that brings us an understanding of his name. It is the word that reveals his name to us. It is the word that reveals to us the nature of the name. It is the word that helps us to understand the multifaceted grandiosity of God. It is the word that helps us, but he said that he has magnified his word even above his name, and you know his name is powerful. God has magnified his word above his name because his word reveals his name. I want you to notice what he says in, in uh, St. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, and then verse 14. You'll know this. In the beginning was the, come on, say it with me, the word, and the word was with God, and the 
Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. And then verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, I want you to see this, that Jesus the man prepares me for heaven, but Jesus the Word prepares me for earth. Jesus the man prepares me for heaven, but Jesus the Word prepares me for earth. That's why he says, don't let this Word depart from your mouth. You hold on to this Word. Stick to the script. Don't turn to the right nor to the left. And I want you to notice how Jesus himself stuck to the script and did not take it upon himself to try to change the script. Now, this is the one, I mean, he's the, he's the, the, the script writer's son. Now, he should have had a little privilege, but I want you to see how obedient Jesus was. St. John chapter 12, verse 47 through 50. Notice this. Jesus said, if anyone hears my words and does not believe them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority. Notice that. Jesus said, I'm sticking to the script. I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command that I should say and uh, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Jesus was saying, I'm, I'm re remaining loyal to the script. I'm not changing anything. What God has said is what I'm going to say. Jesus was committed to follow the script. He was committed to follow the script. Jesus, our example, was committed to follow the script. I want you to notice uh, St. John chapter 8, verse 28 in the English Standard Version. Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. He says, I don't take any liberty to change anything. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not operating under my authority. I'm operating under the authority that God sent me to the earth to do. Now, if Jesus didn't have the authority to change the script, who are you or who am I to try to change the script? I don't care what time it is. I don't have the authority to change the script. I didn't write I don't have the authority to change the script. And yet we have people today that I would really almost call Christian atheists because they say that they love God with their mouth but their lifestyles look just like other folks in the world. Come on, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all, you know, this is real church. This is not pretend to be. This is the, this is the real deal. We don't, we don't have any, anybody to impress and any airs to put on. I, I mean, they go to church. They praise the Lord. They say their little prayers. Uh, but at the end of the day, they live just like the world. They live, I mean, they say that they love God. You know, I love God and I, I, I read my, my word. And they'd be at home shacking with somebody. I mean, I didn't write the script. I didn't write the script. It, it's, and I have no liberty to change it. I have no liberty to change it. I mean, one of our seniors here, one of our senior citizens here, and uh, she came to me just a few weeks ago and said to me that She'd been living with a man unmarried for two years. She said, I got convicted of the Holy Ghost. And I changed that. And I moved out. I commended her, gray-haired woman. Did she love God? Yes. Was she living according to the Word? No. Was she convicted by the Holy Spirit? Yes. Did she change her living arrangements? Yes. That's real Christianity. It, the, the great sin in life is not being wrong. It's failure to get right when you have a chance. And I wish that everybody would be as responsive to the Word of God, and yet there are people that will hear the Word and go away unchanged and unconvicted by the Word because they have exalted their own traditions and the opinions of man and the modern-day culture and allowed culture to take precedence and to make the Word of God of non-effect, which is a sin according to the Word of God. 
We have no authority to allow our culture to take precedence over God's Word. God says, listen, don't turn to the right nor to the left. I don't care what other folks are doing. I don't care what anybody else is doing in anybody else's house. In this house. And let me just say this to you. It is a terrible thing to be called by his name but not characterized by his nature. It's a terrible thing to be called by his name but not characterized by his nature. And I just want you to know that God is very serious about his people. He's trying to wake us up out of a drunken stupor. We have drunk ourselves with the libations of the world and we are intoxicated with our own egos. The people are living under themselves and making the rules up. If it feels good, do it. According to whom? That is not the Bible that I read. The Bible that I read says, let a man deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. I have no authority to change the script. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 27. I want you to notice the word. Listen, we're dealing with the script today. I know some of y'all haven't read your script this week. We're going to make it up now. We're going to make it up now. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Notice, my son, give attention to my words. Give attention to my words. That's a command. Give attention. It didn't say neglect it. It says give attention to it. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. And notice he says, for they are life to those that find it. It is life to those that find it. The word is life to those that find it and health. One version says medicine to all your flesh. This word is a prescription. If you will take it, I mean, if you'll take it as diligently as you take your medicine, you will watch the Word do a healing work in your soul, in your mind, to the issues of your past. The Word does the work. It is medicine. It is medicine. This Word is health to all your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it come the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. This is the script. This is the script. This is the script. Isaiah chapter 30, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 and 21. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, I know you're going to have a hard time, but though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. God has given us the teacher, the Holy Ghost, to be able to walk with us educated by the Word of God in your heart, in your mind. And he'll say, this is the way, walk in it, stick to the script. Touch your neighbor, says, stick to the script. Stick to the script. See, once we are saved, you know, who said we have the right to just do what we want to do and to choose our own way once we are saved? Once we are saved, I mean, we don't become robots, but we do surrender our will to God's will. And we become what is known in the Greek as a doulos, a doulos. A doulos is a love servant. It's a slave, a person who becomes a slave of Christ, a servant of Christ by his own will, not by coercion. Doesn't mean that they're divorcing their mind and, and all of that. We love God with our heart, with our bodies, our mind, our soul, our strength. We love God with every dimension of who we are. But when you are a doulos, you're saying, I lay my will down. I, I lay my, my right down to, to, to live pleasing to my own flesh. We're saying, I lay that down willingly. I become a doulos, a love servant, a love servant. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 23 says, this is Jesus talking, and he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny. Is that word in your Bible? <laughs> let him deny himself. It didn't say let him aggrandize himself. It didn't say let him ple pleasure himself. It didn't say let him, let him just I enjoy himself to the fullest and live, eat, drink, and be merry. And it says, and then take up his cross daily. How often? Daily, 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 daily and then follow me. This is a script. 
This is a script. This is Jesus talking. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. This is Jesus. If anyone, man or woman, boy or girl, if anyone is going to follow me, be my disciple, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. Let him deny herself and take up their cross daily and follow me. Now, here's my question. Have you found your cause for Christ? Have you found your, your cross for Christ? Your cross for Christ is your cause for Christ. Have you found, he says, take up your cross. Jesus carried his cross, but you got to take up yours. Have you found your cross or your cause for Christ? And I want you to just take a, a, a moment right now. Take a moment just right now, because if you don't do it now, you're not going to get it done. I want you to list three things that you will do this week to be a witness and to let your light shine for Jesus. Just think of three things that you will do this week to be a witness and to let your light shine for Jesus. Jesus said, take up your cross, your cause, and follow him. List three things that you will do this week to be a witness and to let your light shine for Jesus. Who will you talk to? What will you say? How will you worship? How will you serve? How will you exemplify his love? List three things that you will do this week to be a witness and let your light shine for Jesus. For some of you, it might be for you to hold your tongue when you get ready to try to say something. Just put on that, I'm going to hold my tongue because some, you know, some of you all know that this is, a, this is a world of iniquity right here. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.